Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Undisciplined Mind podcast for Tuesday, November 24th, 2015. I've got me some Starbucks because it's Friday. Well, no, it's Tuesday. I just said that. But it's my Friday. <laughs> Today's my last day of work. I'm taking tomorrow off. I actually got tomorrow off and next Monday off so I can do a big nano push. Uh, in case I need that. It turns out I hey, probably won't need it. Word hurting report for this morning. I wrote 1,888 words this morning. So they were flowing quite nicely. Quite nicely. Um, I got all the pieces in play for the, for the grand finale. I know what it's going to be. I think I understand all the ramifications. Although one... New one just popped into my head. Shortly, uh, well, actually, like when I was put my coat on to leave the house. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's coming along. You know, so basically, I'm at forty six thousand seven hundred and some odd words right now. So basically, if I just do the minimum word count of sixteen sixty seven for the next two days, I have surpassed. 50,000 words, which is awesome. Now, I'm not going to be done in 3,200 words. I'm not going to be done in that, I don't think. So it's going to go over. Uh, But at this point, I'm feeling like I'll have it done by the 30th. I do, I do, I do, I do. So... Sunday night, we went and we were invited to dinner by some friends from church. And we went over to their place and had a great evening. And they introduced us to a new game. That, well, a, a game that's new to us. I don't know how new it is. So I thought I'd talk about that and share that a little bit. Because it was, it was fun to play, even though I sucked. And I'll get into that. The game is called Seven Wonders. And so to begin, you, you, you uh, through a random means, you pick a city. And I'm assuming there's seven cities. I don't know that. But given the name of the, of, the, of the game, it would seem logical. Wow, the sun is just causing these clouds to be just the most beautiful pinkest orange. Nice. Anyway, I digress. So you get these cities, and then there's three decks of cards, numbered one, two, and three. And so you start off with deck number one, and you're given, everybody's given seven cards. At least we were playing with four of us, so I I don't know if the number of cards changes if you got more people. I don't think so. I think they add cards to the deck, actually, from what what my friend was saying. So you get seven cards. Don't get too attached to that hand, though, because... You only get to play one. Well, before I get into the mechanics of the game, so let's talk about the cards. So there are about, I don't know, six, maybe seven different types of cards. You've got brown cards, which are for various resources. And resources include things like wood and stone and clay bricks and blown, blown uh, glass. And actually, that might be a technology. But um, you've got this ore, <laughs> which we, for some reason, uh, <laughs> it's got the name of their household of shiny poop, and it does kind of look like shiny poop. So we we it was fun. We say I want to buy a shiny poop from you. <laughs> so you got those. You got these yellow cards, which are kind of mercantile cards. Uh, you've got green cards, which are those are technology cards. If I'm remember, if I'm remember, remembering the names correctly, you got these gray cards, which are kind of these which are kind of these, I don't know what they're called. They're kind of like technologies, but they're things like, you know, a loom, so you can make linen, and um, what were some of the other ones? I think the glass blowing was one of those. So you have some of those. You got the you got purple, which are like gills. And the point of all this is to gain victory points. And so certain cards will have certain values for you to get victory points. So, like, uh, you might have a yellow 
that's like you're going to be able to, at the end, when you do the final scoring, you're going to get one victory point for every brown card that you and the people to your left and right have. And so all these things have victory points. Now, the other thing you're looking to do is within your city, you've got some big project. So the cities are things like Gaza. So your big building project, you're building the Seven Wonders. Your big building project is, you know, the pyramids. Uh, for Babylon, it's the Hanging Gardens. For Alexandria, it's the Lighthouse. That one confused me because I've never heard of the lighthouses of Alexandria. I might have to look that up sometime because I don't know if I'm just woefully informed or if just the Library of Alexandria gets all the press. I don't know. The lighthouse thing kind of threw me a little bit. Uh, you had Ephesus. I forget what they had. I mean, there's really not too much focus on what it is you're building. It's, it's The picture's on. You get this little card. It's like a placard. It's, it's kind of big. Um, and so you can build this thing, and it takes certain combinations of resources to build the building in three or four phases. And then each time you build a phase of your building, you get something. You might get a certain amount of production. You know, maybe you can get, you might have a choice at every turn. You can take a wood or a clay or a shiny poop uh, for getting level one done. Or you might get some sort of mobility, like the ability, there is a discard pile, the ability to riffle through the discard pile and build whatever you want out of there for free without having to pay the, the resource cost, you know. So there's some cool things there. So the mechanics of it are, so you get your hand and you can play, you play one card a hand. And so you pick the card you want to play. Now, some of them, like the basic resource cards, there's no cost to them. So you can just start laying those down immediately. So you're looking at what your project needs. You may be looking at what your neighbors make or, more importantly, don't make. Because every city has got a resource that, that they make one of every, every turn by default. Um, so I have to remember, there was one city, you know, I had one city that was glass. I think that was Alexandria. I had one city that was the clay bricks. Um, we did three rounds of it, I believe. And then there's money that changes hands. Oh, and there's battle cards. That's what we got. There, there, there are military cards there, too, because it's a battle round. So I, I'll talk about that when we get there. So... You, you figure out what your one card is going to be, and we kind of played a house rule that everybody picked their card and set it down. And then what you do is you set your, the rest of your hand, you set it aside because it rotates the next person. So the first round, it goes clockwise. The second round, it goes counterclockwise. And the third round, it goes clockwise again. So then you play your card. You might have to pay, you start off with three coins. You might have to pay one coin. Uh, if the card specifies that, you might have to pay no coins. Uh, you might just have to make sure you've got the necessary resources. And if you're short, you can buy resources from your immediate neighbors. So the person that was across from me in the table, I could not buy from. But I could buy from the people on the left and the right. And so you continue on. So we're, we're still on the level one cards. You continue on with that. So now I pick up my neighbor's cards, and my other neighbor picks up the cards that I left. And now I've got a whole new hand i got to deal with, and i got to figure out, okay, what card do I want to play out of this hand? And so you're, you're accumulating resources. You're accumulating other cards that are going to help get you victory points, be that like a, a mercantile. There's, there's some of the mercantile cards, like there's these trading posts that will allow you to trade with somebody in one direction. You can buy resources from them for one coin instead of two. So that can be helpful because coins do, if you get a lot of coins, coins do uh, relate have a, via a ratio to victory points. So we're playing this game and the first game I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of experiencing it. I'm not really... Um, I don't really have a, a, a discernible strategy. I'm just trying a, a plethora of different cards. And I got a lot of I got a lot of coin through various various means. And and, and I was actually trying to, because I was thinking that was a good mechanic to win the game, because 
uh, every three coins turns into one victory point at the end when you're scoring. And so we got through, and what happens, so you get to the end of a round, I guess I'll call it. And a round is when you've, you, so you get down to the point where you've got two of the level one cards, and you can play, you can play uh, one card, and then the last card gets discarded. Uh, or you can actually do this at any point, you can burn your last card, and then you get three coin for it. So once you finish, that round, then you do your battle. And so you have these red cards that are gonna be like your your battle skill level, I guess maybe you'd call it. So they get like one, two, and three shields and they're cumulative. And so if nobody got any battle cards, it's all a draw and nobody wins and nobody loses. But if I have like a battle card with one shield on it and nobody else has any, then I beat them. So for the first round, I get one victory point for each of those, and they get a negative one victory point. So you get these little chips you do. At the higher levels, at, lo at round at uh, for level two, uh, the winner gets three victory points, and for um, level three, the winner gets five victory points. But if you lose, you still only get minus one. You get these little tiles you put on your thing. And then you go to the level two cards. And the gameplay is the same, but the cards have greater rewards, and the cards also have greater costs. And so you might have more mixtures of things that you need to do. So you've got to be managing what it is you want to be doing with your cards and what it is you want to be doing with your project. Because there are benefits. Usually there's victory points assigned or whatever to completing your project. So the first game, I was dead freaking last, which is not terribly surprising, I guess, because I wasn't really, I wasn't really trying to do a strategy. So I, I kind of looked around and I noticed that my friend who got the highest score, he had a bunch of yellow cards, the mercantile cards, and I thought, okay. Next hand, I'm gonna. Next round, I'm gonna. Or next uh, uh, round, I'm gonna focus on that. Oh, I'm sorry. So we got through all three rounds, and then we scored, and I was the last. So we played a whole other game, got a new city, started all over, and the next round, I was focusing on the yellow cards. I had a bunch of yellow, yellow cards. They gave me points based on what me and my opponents had of certain color cards. I had one of the trading posts. I had a bucket ton of money. I was stacking them like poker chips. And we get done and I was second from last. And I'm like, okay, well yellow obviously isn't, alone isn't doing that. And then I noticed that my, my friend who, who won that round by a pretty good margin, uh, he had a lot of these green cards, and green cards are the technology cards. I think they're the technology cards. And apparently you score them kind of in, uh, exponentially. The more you have, and if you have sets, and I guess the set is being, there's three different technology cards. So if you've got one set of, one of each of the technology cards, that's one set. You can also have multiples of any given technology. I'm not quite sure what that's called. But you, know, you add all these things up, and they, and they, and they go exponentially. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really make a, an effort to get a hold of a lot of green cards for the, for, for it was gonna be our last game. Uh, so I got like five green cards. I had one set, as they call it, where you've got one of each technology, and I had a couple other ones in one of the technologies. And I had, yeah, I had other cards too, but you know, because a green card wasn't always available, but you know, if I had a choice, I went with a green card. And I was dead freaking last again. So obviously, you know, and I guess that's good because it makes it, it makes it a challenge. You know, you aren't going to be able to easily win this game by focusing on just one thing. You know, just money doesn't do it. Just green cards couldn't do it. Although I have a feeling if I concentrated more on getting sets, because I didn't totally understand that really until we were scoring up mine because the whole exponential math of the green cards is a little confusing for the first time player so um, 
if I worked more on getting more sets, I would have done a lot better. So maybe, you know, a heavy green card outlay might be better if I worried more about sets as opposed to just having green cards. So, um, but it was a fun game. I mean, even though I was last or next to last, all three games, I did have a fun time. It's, uh, and it's playable, I think, from like three to seven or more players. Um, so it's a fun, it, it was a fun evening. It was fun to be with our friends, and it was fun to play this game. So if you uh, see it on the supermarket shelves or game shop shelves and want to give it a go, I would recommend it because I had a lot of fun with it. It's something I would look forward to playing again. But I think that'll be it for today. Uh, I will I'll be back tomorrow. I'm not working, but I'll find a way to make a podcast for you because um, I'm, I'm nice like that. <laughs> Anyway, I'll be talking to you tomorrow. So, be seeing you.